I think I first watched that when I was about four years old and got a, got a total like daddy crush on Arnold Schwarzenegger and have had one ever since. Hi everyone, this week I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite film characters. A lot of you ask me about where I get my inspiration from and that is normally through reading and through film and I wanna share with you some of my favorites that you might never have heard of that I definitely think you should go away and watch. Number one on my list is Dracula the Francis Ford Coppola version. It has so many amazing characters, everybody from Lucy who is played by Sadie Frost and she has that iconic white lace moment where she's in the glass coffin and she turns into a most beautiful amazing vampire. The makeup and prosthetics in that film are just so amazing. It's like the perfect mix of dreamlike fantasy, but there's something a little bit cartoonish about it, but it's also kind of very epically beautiful. My second favorite film to reference is The Cell with Jennifer Lopez. Um, and I think they share the same costume designer. I think Ico also designed all the amazing clothes in The Cell. And you can kind of tell by those incredible muscle suits that all the characters get into when they go into that weird dreamlike uh, state. The film is basically about Jennifer Lopez getting into the mind of a really, really dark and sinister character and trying to kind of like unlock him from the inside. I think for me, the character designs are incredible. When she goes into that dreamlike space, there's a lot of like very creepy, amazing. It's almost like she's like stepped into a music video every time she goes inside this guy's head. So you should definitely watch that. Obviously, a huge favorite of mine is Terminator 2 with Arnold Schwarzenegger and for me, that film is just, has just standard the test of time in terms of the prosthetics, the CGI, the like evil guy who turns into that molten metal is just incredible. And for me, that was definitely like one of the most iconic films growing up in terms of like referencing something that was prosthetic led in, in cinema. Number four would be a film called Mughal Iyazam, which is a 1960s Bollywood film. And it's about this prince who falls in love with one of the court dancers. It's like kind of musical theater, obviously, a really incredible song and dance, these really big epic numbers, the costume, the jewelry is just absolutely beautifully opulent, all of these women who are singing in these incredible saris with the face jewellery. Um, Bollywood definitely has a lot of amazing makeup and hair references, so if you don't know any Bollywood, Bollywood films, 100% go and check them out because there's so much that you can take from that genre. Next would be Edward Scissorhands, and that is a really obvious choice, but I feel like he could be in a Junior Watanabe show or a Rick Owens show. He's got this really beautiful tonal makeup look with scars and these kind of hollowed out eyes and very pale skin and pale lips and this like mad black wiry hairdo, these long metallic fingernail things. And aesthetically, it's just a really, really beautiful and quite elegant film. Next would be The Elephant Man with John Hurt. The Elephant Man was actually a really important film for hair and makeup and after it came out, it was the film that encouraged the Academy Awards to host like an awards category for best makeup in film. And I believe that the makeup artist Chris Tucker would be doing hair and makeup for like 40 hours with his team or something totally crazy. And he didn't just work on John Hurt's face, but he also, I think, worked, you know, on his whole body, on his skeleton. And that's why the makeup for that was so impressive because it was just so kind of like perfectly organic from, from the character's face because he'd worked from like head to toe in making the prosthetics. Next is Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman. This film sees Dustin Hoffman dressing up as a woman and the interesting thing about it is he had this really deep connection with the character on and off screen that actually really prompted him to question his feelings about women. The character he played was a kind of middle older age lady, wasn't particularly good looking and it kind of made him realise of what women have to go through and that he might not think twice about looking at this woman how that might make her feel so it had a very profound impact on him and his relationship with women in general and himself next would be cabaret i remember watching this film 
when I was really, really little, I would like sneak into my mum and dad's room and we had this tiny little TV and videotapes and I would just watch it all the time. And I was totally mesmerised by Liza Minnelli and that really deep V hairline that she had and how sort of unusual a woman and a character she was. Joel Grey, who played the cabaret kind of host and owner, had the most amazing look, quite kind of terrifyingly dramatic and camp, but also very sinister. Yeah, the whole film's really amazing. Lastly, I would pick Hellraiser. It has, again, the most incredible costume, hair and makeup, set design, really important film, probably one of the, the best British horror movies. It's an incredibly inspiring film for, for hair and makeup artists. I've been inspired, I've gone and taken pictures of myself with um, acupuncture in my face. <laughs> so I don't like Hellraiser. And um, if you haven't seen it, you definitely should because I'm sure you'll love it. So thank you so much for watching. If you have anything else you want me to talk about, inspiration, references, whatever, let me know in the comments below and I will see you next week. Bye.